So this is the first RC video. A bad word. Instructional man. video. Yeah. Instructional video. Yeah. We, so I posted like a like a thing on Instagram. Questionnaire, whatever thing. I think this video is gonna be like how to get started in turbine jets. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff on like RC jets and RC planes, but I don't see a lot on RC turbine jets. So I think we're gonna start off with. Like, you mean ducted, ducted fan? Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll do both. We'll do ducted fan and we'll do turbine jets. Oh yeah. Because they kind of go hand in hand. They just do, but level. it's it's typically you start with a ducted fan. Yeah, but we'll we'll get to that. Save okay. that. So let's just start off with like how we got started. I guess. What was it like? Thirteen years ago. We had no idea what to do. Yeah. None. So we got some help from a friend, learned how to fly, and then after that, we're into jets five years later. Um, there's plenty of how-to videos on how to get started into RC flying, like beginner RC videos, what you'll need, this and that, checking stuff, and so go watch those videos if you want to see. But this is for like, you know how to fly already, you're ready to go into like jets. And you had to make a commitment into arts uh, radio yeah. control flying because at this stage when you go into uh, jets and so forth, I mean you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars. Where I mean, either way, even if you're starting out small, it's still a, a good commitment. You learn a lot doing it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's you know? it's, it's a hobby as it, it is as much of a hobby as it is uh, educational. You learn a lot. Wait, first let's go. Let's start off normal idea. So you, 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 you're flying. Nor, you're flying good, and you, you think it's time for you to go into normal EDF. EDF means electric ducted fan, by the way, battery powered jets. And you want to get into your first EDF. Uh, definitely something from like Horizon, like a small F15 or F16. Right, After you've flown right. something like a fast, uh, nor, uh, low wing plane. And uh, typically. You would use, when you're starting out, you, you would use something like a DX5 or, this is really old, this is like my second radio. But uh, you would use something like a, maybe like a DX8 or a DX6. Those are all Spectrum radios. Everything from Horizon uses pretty much Spectrum. So if you have a Spectrum radio, it'll bind with any plane from Horizon. But once you get into your, like your normal foam EDF jets from Horizon, you've flown it for good amount of time you're looking around four hundred dollars for planes like that for a, for a rate for a plane or a radio no no for the for the plane itself for the jet edf jet yeah it's it's you're looking around about 300 and about yeah. 100 150 dollars for batteries as well yeah so, batteries uh, charger so you're gonna need a radio uh which is around 250 yeah it doesn't come with the plane yeah that's a separate uh thing but the thing about radios is once you get a, like a DX6, for example, which is in like the $200 range, $250 range, that you can use it on any other, you can use it for different planes. You don't have to use it for one plane. So it has a memory built in where you can bind it and bind it to another plane, bind it to another plane, bind it to another plane, and then just switch between them. You don't need to buy 10 radios for your 10 planes. Uh, one radio controls, I think, 20, 25, 250, 30, 250 planes. Yeah. Past the EDF part. So uh, now let's get into higher end EDFs. High end EDF. Yeah, like something like, for example, like it'll be like a Hubu 32, which you don't have anymore, or something from like Comp R. Right, and those are the those, like, wood spark. balsa and uh, some are composite. Yeah, some and, composite. And you're talking about eight, nine pounds weight. Right, and those are typically you're looking. It comes as a kit, so the the E Flight Horizon Hobby stuff is pretty much all ready for you. You just gotta screw it together, and you're good to go. It'll take longer for you to charge the battery. But, but most of them you could be done in about an hour, ready to fly. But, but in, in terms of like like tur like high end EDFs, composite, wooden, uh, you actually need to build it. Um, I mean, it comes, the, the plane comes sheeted and everything, but you got to put the electronics in there, make right, sure everything's I, tight. Yeah, like the servos don't come with it. Uh, the uh, uh, receiver, the batteries, receiver, batteries, wiring. Uh, That's like all it. separate. So you get the kit itself, which is just the bare airframe, and then you get all the electronics batteries, everything you need for the actual flight uh, uh, to put in the jet so it can work. Right. And you put those in the jet after. Um, so you're looking around maybe $2,500 or something like that. Or $1,000. What? 
Let's so, talk radios a little bit in terms of like higher end stuff. Right. So we have, we went from the DX5. This is like your normal stuff. I don't know if they make this. They don't make this anymore. anymore. It's a DX6 now. Right. DX6 is pretty right. good. This is so an pretend it's a DX6. But now you're in the higher end stuff. More channels. You want something a little bit more of higher quality, a little better radio. I would go with like something like a DX12. This is a DX18 Generation One. And I think which that they don't make anymore. They don't make these anymore. They they only make they don't even make the 18 anymore. They only make the 20. Not even the 20. They make the no, IX20, which right. is a newer uh, version. But anything, I want to say nine channels and up. Nine channels being the bare minimum because when it, when you go into higher end jets, you want to make everything individual. So you don't have wide connections. Every individual servo gets its own port on the receiver. Gives you a stronger signal for each servo and you can adjust it finely individually fine tune right to the so LB. you would need a radio like this a dx18 or dx9 dx12 or ix12 or know, newer or ix20 model. yeah or newer this is what i mean even the old ones work. five six years even yeah, the old yeah. ones work as long I as mean, you have something that's computerized that's the thing computerized programmable radio yeah, yeah. what was the radio to go to that so is futaba uh, but I just find Spectrum is more accessible everywhere. It it it, it is, and it's it's more. You're you're ba you're you're bound to find somebody who is more familiar with Spectrum at your flying field than any other yeah. uh, radio. So if you need help, and this is one of the nice thing about this hobby is, at the field where everybody's flying, everybody becomes you know helps each each other. Uh, everybody has his own input. Everybody has his own. Uh, experience to move on to turbine power stuff right what are we looking at what's different between higher end jets EDF jets and turbine powered jets what's the main difference main difference is that EDF is electric it's it's ducted fan which is an electro motor electrical motor uh, runs on battery the difference between the EDF and the jets are the propulsion, which in, in at this in the jets you will have a, a turbine or miniature turbine gas motor, turbine gas turbine that what propels the plane. And those run on either diesel, uh, kerosene, or jet A1. Uh, kerosene is, you got to mix with either diesel or kerosene. You got to mix with jet oil. So is uh, so even is Jet A1. Yeah, Jet all A1. all three have to mix a proportion with Jet oil. I think it's one quart for every five gallons of either fuel. Right, and that to lubricate uh, the bearings, the bearings and and while when the engine is running. So, second thing is the noise. Turbine is way louder, which I think is like oh, the best sweet. part about it. It's sweet. It just sounds like a real uh, jet engine. Really well, loud. It is a real jet engine. It's just miniature. The key difference, I think, from the EDF and the turbine is you're going to get about four or three minutes with the electric powered plane. You're going to get about six minutes or well, more. Well, it depends how big uh, your fuel tank is. Generally, you're going to get like five minutes or more. Most people, you know, I, I, I personally think flying more than six, seven minutes, it, be, it becomes boring, you know, at between five and seven minutes is your sweet spot. Uh, you get satisfaction of the flight and the intensity and uh, the adrenaline rush. A lot of people get scared when they fly like a jet or a turbine powered plane. Oh, um, it's, it's an adrenaline rush. Yeah, it's but... Not, it's not, well, you're, of course it's scared, you but know. But the, fun, the, the funny thing is... The, the bigger or more, the scarier the plane looks, the easier it is to fly. It's yeah, weird. general rule of thumb, the bigger the plane is, the easier it is to control, to fly. What should people expect going into their first jet flight? How would you go about it? Number one is to make sure everything works right, don't rush anything, right? Never fly with a known defect. But I'm saying like, after you check, you, you make sure you check everything. Double check everything, triple check everything. Everything's tight, the screws are all set, wires are plugged in fully. Um, it's not a very bad idea to get to make a checklist out of, you know, on paper. Also, or if you have a friend. Or, or, or your, your phone, for that matter. Uh, also, if you have a friend, what you can do is you can check through the plane and then have your friend just overlook what you're doing to see if you're making any mistakes that you're not catching. Right. And they can let you know. And you definitely not, not, not to be complacent, you know, it's, it's a check and double check and triple check. And then now you're ready to fly, you're fueled up. Um, 
Before every flight, I like to check my control surfaces. Right, Make sure and they're going the right direction. You do the range check. The range check and the control surfaces. Because right. that five minutes will save you money and uh, hardship. It actually doesn't take uh, five minutes. I mean, you know, it's just make sure that orientation, uh, the, 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 the surface is The moving worst thing the is direction. whenever you take off and then you go right, but the plane goes left. Right, that's 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 a problem. Yeah. The main trouble I see people having flying jets is landing it. They can take off and fly it around, but the most troublesome error where they get into is the when it comes actually time to get the plane back on the ground. See, that stems from the adrenaline and the... the uh, the concern that you you know invested so much money in it and they don't want anything bad to happen. That's definitely you know? part of it. That's definitely well, it's part of it. Part of, it, of the rush for sure. You know, and it's uh, you know it, it's difficult the first time, second time, third time. But as but but let's talk about like tips on how to get rid of that eventually. The very first time you're gonna do it, you're gonna be um, adrenaline rush like. You never. Yeah, I don't think you will walk straight back to the pits. Yeah, but you know? I think after the first flight. Um, after a first flight, it's going to get way easier. Like everything else, the more experience, the more you fly, the, the easier it's going to get. The, you'll understand how how predictable the plane is. And uh, But the, the issue I see with a lot of people flying jets is they'll fly it, they'll take off, they'll fly, and then they'll fly really fast and do whatever they need to do. But when it comes time to landing, they always land fast. And I think that's that the one main thing that I would do, or that what I did is fly the plane slow. Because here, well, I kind of was forced to fly it slow because when we built our first jet, we didn't have landing brakes for right. the first three months. So if I didn't land slow enough, we were gonna overshoot the runway. But that's that was a, I'm glad that was the case because that taught me how to fly slow and land at the right speed. Because the issue is a lot of people come in too fast and they start bouncing, right. or they overshoot the runway. Yeah. So what I would recommend is. Fly the first time, have a friend help you. Definitely you need a spotter. Have a, you definitely have a co-pilot who knows, point. who tells you what's going on around you, uh, watches around, uh, you know, what's in the air, which, which, where. But, but past the watching around point, someone who knows how to actually, has flown one before and knows what to look out for so they can guide you. But besides that, um, after you get, once you start flying it actually, what I would do is if the plane has flaps, mm -hmm. throw the flaps down, go 100 feet in the air, and practice flying it slow, where you're comfortable enough. Because the the main point or the key is to read the plane what it's doing. Because if you don't know when to give it power or when to slow down, you're never gonna get the landing down right. One key thing that you you should be you should know about flying uh, turbine jets is you always need about you need to be five seconds ahead right. of what's going on. Why because is that? it takes, unlike EDF, the uh, the turbine engines take three, four seconds to spool up. So just in case if you aborted the landing and you do not like your position in relation to the runway that you're coming to a landing, you need it. It needs few seconds for the for the. Uh, in other words, here's your throttle stick. When you power up, um, when you when you power up on the EDF, <coughs> jet, right, you're gonna get that power immediately. It's electric, right? But if it's turbine powered, if you go, if you go from idle or wherever and you power it up, there's gonna be a second. There's gonna be a couple second lag in between that point to the point, the position you have your throttle at. Fly the plane slow. Know how to fly the plane slow because you can fly fast. Anybody can. Fly Anybody fast. can fly fast, but the Controlling most important thing. Slow, slow, uh, EDF, EDF, any plane really, any plane it doesn't have to be even jets. Any plane. The, right. If you once you learn how to fly that plane slow and you know what to look out for, signs for a stall. You became accomplished by yes. it, if you will. Because you can now land confidently. You're not scared to land anymore. Correct. Because you know what to look out for. Let's go on to actually what we use when we fly. What we use? Our equipment. So, all of what I showed you, I did use. <laughs> yes. We did at, use all of this. At the beginning, this is what we started. We started off with this. Graduated to this. This is a really good radio, by the way. I still use it. Yeah, it's still, it's, still, it's, it's, it, it, well, it, it's still is a good radio. It still know? is a very good radio. But however, you get when to you get to a point where you're really gone in, when you're really dedicated yourself to it, 
is when you advance into something to the next step. You get into planes which cost you $20,000 if you will. You need as much uh, uh, as much reliability in terms of uh, radio signal, uh, telemetry, uh, 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 redundancy. So uh, this is the radio we use now? This is a radio that we invested in. in this is a Jetty DS24. It's a really good radio, that's all I could say. Um, just close this out of the way. So again, it's fully computerized. Transmitter is on and ready. And what I like about it is it has a lot of redundant uh, features on it. So there's four antennas on the top that are running two bands of 2.4 gigahertz. So yes. if one fails, it switches to the other band. And then what I what this radio has, which I don't think I've seen on any other radio on the market, is it has a 900 megahertz redundancy. Back back well, back actually, back I take the back. There's all, there's another brand that does utilize 900, but they don't use it as a as a redundancy. They only it's for it's from FR Sky, but it's nowhere near like this kind of level. Um, they only use it for like like flying drones and stuff like that, but it's not use the way this radio uses it so pretty much it goes from the main 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 channel band that fails switches to the secondary 2.4 and if that fails it switches to 900 megahertz which is why this antenna is here so you have a total of five antennas um besides that just the feel of the radio um how solid it is it has a really good weight to it um it's a good it's quality um it has Pretty much, you, whatever you want to do, you can program on this radio. It has a stick shaker, so for example, there's an example of that. If you have a pitot tube which shows you your airspeed, if you're approaching a stall, you can have it so your elevator stick vibrates like a stick, like a stick shaker in a real plane. Right. Telling you that you're stalling, or you can have the radio tell it to you. So I don't have it in this, but let's change it. Let's select the model. Here is the VLOC. Flight mode one. So if I tilt the radio, Flight mode one. it'll tell me, it's not connected to the plane, but it'll tell me other information. Or if I tilt it this timer, way, Timer, 6 minutes, 30 seconds. It'll tell me my timer. Yeah, this radio has, like, like most of them, but this was a pioneer in terms of having the redundancy, uh, the 900 megahertz. And the reason is 900 megahertz because most of the radios now at the flying field are 2.4 gigahertz. But so if in case of few other, uh, if the signal gets jammed or it gets saturated for whatever reason, and it loses uh, communication via the 2.4 gigahertz, it will automatically, seemingly, it will just switch to 900. It just switch without without. Uh, without anything. And you know, what does the 24 stand for by the way? 24. That means it has 20 it, it, it has 24 channels and it, it, it so does function 24. DX18 is 18, 18 channels. channels. It's a new brand which is the it's the core, core power box core. Our power box which is I think it's a direct competitor to this radio. Right, which is a, a, a very a very good radio. Uh, you know, people speak very highly of it. We I haven't seen it personally, I haven't touched it personally, but people speak highly of it. It is in par with this. Uh, I think once it comes to this range, this is, is your more professional, exactly professional. Once professional it comes down to this range of radio, Being this or the core for that right. matter, you are at professional level. Or even Futaba has like a really high end radio as well. Right, I have absolutely right. no experience in Futaba. What I'm trying to say is, once it comes to this level, it comes down more to preference on what you think, on what you like in terms of a radio. Right, and, and, and like they're that. they're both you know between this and the Powerbox core, uh, which I haven't seen personally uh, i'm just just here from uh, colleagues and uh, very good radio and it is in par with the jetty so both of them you can't uh, go wrong you can't go wrong of course uh it just uh, people like the feel of this people like the feel of that one and this is what it comes you know, down to preference that's right. pretty much basically yes. summed up comes <coughs> down to preference but before we end off i want to talk about like emergency situations Right? Because... You call 911. 
flameouts happen, and I've went through seven-ish flameouts. Yes, yes, we. I've blown up a lot of uh, turbine turbines. Blades. Yes. Um, Let me bring the example I wanted to show. Yeah, flame out means while you're flying, your your uh, your engine just uh, shuts down for whatever reason, and the reason for shutdown is it's controlled by the computer of the uh, turbine because the turbine comes in three parts it, three parts yeah oh, three parts yeah the the engine itself you have the fuel pump and you have the computer that controls the fuel pump and the engine this air will go into your turbine and cause it to flame out right turbines don't like anything but fuel because they're uh, gas guzzlers and if uh, but let's let's talk about other flame outs. So, more serious flame outs than right. that. Uh, this is my very first flame out. Let me show you this. This is the turbine light. wheel. This is the turbine wheel in the back. I was flying the Velox inverted, and you see that it's missing a blade, missing blade right there, and that blade broke while it was spinning about 150,000 RPM bounced off every other turbine wheel, bent everything else, literally shook the whole motor apart. Right. And, and this is what, that what caused uh, the flame out. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if it's not air bubble that goes into the turbine. It's gonna be something that actually, right. maybe da that damaged the turbine itself. Right, flying a plane then that weighs that about 25 pounds-ish. With no Between 25 and 80 pounds, for that matter. And that turns into a glider. It, right. And, and you, jets don't really like to glide, like a glider. Especially the scale ones. Yeah. Scale jets don't like to glide. They're just... Uh, We've had the experience on the... We did almost a time. year ago to the date. Well, almost to the date, you know. Yeah, the, around this time. We flamed out March on the F-16. Yeah. March 30th, his F-16 just flamed out. It flamed out because... Same thing. The right. turbine it, will blow up. Right, it threw a, a turbine uh, a blade and it ricocheted between all the uh, turbine blades and it bent or broke off about 10 of them and it just, it was a catastrophic failure. I managed to get that down so close to the runway. So very close to the runway that right. it was very minimal damage. It's the same minimum it. damage, right. you know. This is what every other one I managed to bring it back to the runway. Yeah. But this one, plane is like 80 pounds, doesn't like to fly. And um, I, although it didn't land on the runway, I managed to land it in a way where it doesn't damage it. Kind of swap, yeah, kind there were some scratches and some uh, repairs, things, but, uh, um, some, some uh, fiberglass repairs. Long but story short, a couple months later, we're flying it again. And again, I'm going to come back to the idea that learning how to fly the plane slow will Actually, save you. Actually, it wasn't a couple of months. It was like a month later, but yeah. because of... Because that, that's what really saved me on getting the plane down to a point where it wasn't damaged a lot or in terms of the other flame outs landed on the runway without a problem. It's, it's because in, 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 a, in a case of flame out, when you're flying a 15, 20 thousand dollars jet, you know, it, and it flames out, it's, it's, you know, it's much easier said than done to stay calm, you know. But, but that's it, why it's very important to learn how to fly it slow. Exactly. Because it, you know how to fly the plane without stalling it. You know not to turn so sharply. A lot of people say when you're flying RC plane, you don't feel it. I disagree with that. You feel you feel what it the more than doing. you're when you're sitting in the cockpit yeah. because you you both need to be in tune and understanding what's ha connected with the plane itself, so you understand what is it doing, what needs to be done in case of an emergency, uh, how it behaves, where to break, where to. Uh, to cut short your turn exactly and uh, knowing how tight you can turn because right. if you turn too tight you're gonna tip stop if you you know and again comes back to flying slowly and that's all experience right that's all experience. main thing that i would worry about when it comes down to fly to flying in an emergency is the one keeping people safe right keeping away from people that's your you main know. priority because at the end of the day yes it is expensive you Very can expensive. always work harder, make another one, but when it hurts somebody, it's, you can't replace the person. You can't replace you know? the person. So, so that's so. main priority: is making sure everyone is safe. Always try. If it safe. has to go down, make sure it goes down and where away where, from people. Right. Away from people. Second priority: that's the main tip in learning and flying any plane is 
flying it slowly. That's going to get you out of the situation. Safe and slow. Right. Safe, away from people. You know, so it's uh, never point the plane at anybody. So um, I think that concludes this first video. Sure. Do you want to add anything else to it? No, um, thing or ideas on something or tips or whatever you guys want to do, you can just comment down below or, right. you know, and that, we can that, make a video on it. What we'll do is after this coronavirus crap ends, whenever it ends, uh, we'll make videos with the plane, yeah. at the field. Because right now everything is closer to the virus. So. Right. We, you know, we're practicing uh, together alone. Alone together, whatever the hell it is. Lights turned off. Anyway. Is it alone together or together alone? Doesn't matter. But uh, look forward to more videos. Um, this is more of like the serious videos because my other videos are more like for funny stuff and uh, it's not really to, meant to inform people. This, These types of videos are meant to give information to people out. This is just work for, this is what worked for us. Right. Right. And then you guys can choose to listen to us or not or make your own adjustments to it. This is just what worked for us. At the end, it's all yeah. about laying things down where it's balanced. And uh, you, you get thanks for watching. Um, and more to come. More to come. And fly and fly and like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.